Well, it's the next day. It's uh, August 20th. It's uh, two hours and 53 minutes into the into the day when I started doing a transition period. Uh, my body was just too sore, so I ended up going going to sleep uh, around 11. I got up around 1, just took a, like a two-hour nap, I think it was. Uh, did my gaming. I'm still limping along on in Lord's Mobile. Um... It's sort of that I'm feeling very fatigued right now, so uh, things are going very, very slowly. So that happens. Though. This is what happens. You do have these periods of time that are uh, that are like that. And the thing is, that I'd be showing you more, but because I was just listening to a whole uh, a whole bunch of music, and my list is very erratic. It's not in one genre or another. There's a whole mix of genres in there. Uh, and it's an existence that, because I spend all my time doing research, that's the nature of the way I see things on, on, a, on a daily and even on an hourly basis. Uh, and so this is how I experience the world. And it's a sort of, it's three o'clock in the morning, I'm up, and is there a FOMO or, you know, a fear of missing out? Sort of, because I'm wondering what other people are doing. I know they're sleeping. I know most people are sleeping right now, but, you know, what else is out there? What Who else is doing what? And and, and this is some of the stuff that crosses my mind. Uh, but I'll sort of satisfy that a little bit by uh, doing a YouTube stroll, you know. Uh, I'm going to continue along the path and... I lift off at the Leroy's, and so I'll probably end up going to uh, Family Five Logs, and then from there I'll probably do uh, Sisters, Sisters Forever, uh, and maybe uh, if I'm feeling up to it, eat passengers. I haven't gone by Clintus in a while. Uh, I do have to go by there, but uh, I don't know. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> a lot of times where I go depends on how I feel. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. This is a short, sweet thing, and that if, if, if we could li listen to music together, I'd be uh, playing some of the music that I'd listen to, but I can't do that, and so, because the, because of YouTube, and and there are particular issues, and so, th this is the way things go. It's just, just kind of it. So, anyways, I will see you uh, uh, at the next transition point. Well, it is 15 hours and 45 minutes into the 20th day of August, and so I am vlogging every day right now. Uh, that's certainly a thing, but including the uh, road vlog, we're vlogging every day. Uh, so this is our beginning transition for the day. Um, I hope to vlog throughout the day with the various different transitions. Uh, but typically we do, uh, this is, well, actually this is the first time we're doing First time in a long time that we're doing the beginning transition. Oh, where I'm coming out of a down position where the body is in rest mode. Uh, the mind isn't, but the uh, body is. And uh, moving into more of an active period. Right now I'm starting up the uh, uh, YouTube stroll with the Yowie Vlogs. And so we'll be on that for a while. Um, while I have my breakfast. This is my breakfast. Uh, I have the iced tea here as well, so uh, that's going to be a nice little breakfast. I enjoy this combination with the uh, with the iced tea. Uh, as it, we're just getting started, but it, the fatigue is always here because there is never really a day off. I'm still I'm still struggling with the concept of leaving Mo Lord's Mobile. I still haven't really made up my mind. I'm leaning, leaning more and more towards towards doing that, but every time I go back and do the daily r routine uh, that's sort of required, this is the minimum required, and it's about uh, anywhere between an, uh, 45 minutes an hour to an hour. That's the amount of work that has to be done. Uh, the question is, could that hour be better? Could there be better use of that hour? And 
I'm really not too sure. Uh, I don't really want to leave the Game Lords Mobile. I've been doing it for um, several years now. I haven't missed the login once for now for more for about two years. And it'll be different. The transition will be different. So that's what I think. I'm, I'm thinking when it comes to September, I'll stop in September. That will sort of be the transition to back to school mode and bring in uh, the music classes I have to do. I have to do music. Uh, there's uh, some work in history that has to be done. I've lined up most of the work because right now the, the uh, if I've got the I've got the uh, notebook done. And I've got the basics lined up for the Lionel LeBron Voltaire project. I'm still working on that. Uh, there is still, still sort of connecting Lionel LeBron to history because he's the type of person that type of person who really is that is that sort of quintessential uh, intellectual that sort of connects back to Voltaire. And so you do have a connection there, and you can sort of see how his behavior reflects in terms of what the characters that you're reading from the 1800s. You know, if you're reading. Stuff from the 1800s, from the, the you know the, the the dawning age of the intellectual. That's where where it is. I saw the Victorian age. Uh, the Victorian age is is really where the intellectual starts popping up. That's the thing of the intellectual. There weren't. It's not that the person there were weren't, weren't smart people before then. It is what happened. There was no real title of intellectual. Uh, prior to uh, the 1800s, prior to the Victorian era, uh, basically Voltaire begins it. He begins the age of the intellectual. And it's these uh, sort of uh, aristocracy types and those within the church who sort of create this title where they don't really have anything to do, but rather that they are now intellectual. So there is no fundamental definition behind the term intellectual. It's just sort of uh, very abstract and loose. And this is in many ways, if you listen to Lionel, this is where he falls in. He's abstract, he's loose. Uh, there is no... He, he goes into things, but he doesn't go into things in, an, in a sufficient detail that in that uh, he knows some of the organic chemistry, he knows some of the physics, he knows some of the stuff, but not enough to really sort of uh, present the argument when it comes out, particularly when it's false. I mean, if he knew enough about atmospheric physics, he'd understand what's going on with the geoengineering. He, he wouldn't, it, it, you know, and I don't want to correct people and sort of say that because there are certain issues in atmospheric physics that are, well, foreboden. They're, they're areas that cannot be gone, gotten into because they are indeed classified. Uh... That you, you, you're not getting what... I'm going to say this carefully, but carefully. What you're seeing isn't spraying, so to speak. It is indeed contrails, but you got to understand the condition in which contrails are, are formed. And there are multiple conditions under which contrails are formed. It is in that a aspect of atmospheric physics, once you understand it, that you understand, okay, those are indeed contrails, but they're of a different category than you would see in most films coming off the tip of a wing or so, or moisture on the uh, a windshield. That those are two different types of of condensation, two different types of contrails. They are all both ID are contrails, but the conditions in which they are formed are completely different. Um. A large chunk of the uh, so-called the trace elements that are found within the so-called contrails, and now they're doing these sort of uh, 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 isotope isolations to sort of figure out what's there. The problem is, is that, and this is what the problem with cold fusion was, and this is the problem with the vaccines. The data doesn't mean anything unless you have a proper calibration curve. The calibration curve is the thing, the standard, by which you measure all things. Without the cal calibration curve, the data means nothing. This is fundamental science. This is the fundamentals of measurement. So what happens is people, oh, we've got this data. Well, do you have your, do you have your calibration curve? Huh? If you hear, you hear, mm, and you see, oh, what's a calibration curve, and you don't see a calibration curve there, 
The data you're being, that's being presented is not scientific. It, it's, it's, it's worthless. It's, it, it doesn't mean anything. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't gather meaning from it. It's just it, 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 because you can, you can actually go out and create a standard. You can actually, from the data, go back and check and see, okay, well, what's the data saying? Where is your information lining up? You, you go back into Gauss, particularly you go back into Gauss. If you're doing error analysis, and that's what it is, it's error analysis. Uh, you go back into Gauss, and Gauss will have a number of tools, mathematical tools, that will allow you to make assessment of the data that's being presented. And you will either see that it's false or it's misleading. In many cases, like the, most of the data that's coming up about uh, about uh, CVD is is basically data that's, that's misleading. And it's from both sides. It's from both the ones who are pro-vaccine and anti-vaccine. They're each coming up with their own data, but the data is not properly qualified. There is no calibration curve. Without the calibration curve, without the standard, there is no real data there. That's not scientific. And any physicist knows this. Anyone who's working within physics knows this. Unfortunately, in chemistry, in, in, in the lower sciences, uh, these calibrations aren't necessary because a large chunk of the time you're working on assertion. You're working on your own personal opinion. And the more you can make people believe your opinion, then, that, then that's the way things go. So anyways, uh, I said, we can do this. We are going to do this. It's going to take a long time. And I said, I'm um, taking time off until September hits. Then it's back to school. All the videos now are all back to school videos. So <laughs> I'm well in line. Well, I guess there's not much to say right now. Anyways, it is, uh, well, five hours into the 23rd day of August 2021. And, uh, we're coming to the end of our day. It's somewhat, we're back at the, at the Yelly Vlogs. Uh, I was outside doing observations until now. Uh, I've, I have officially left Lord's Mobile. Uh, so this is the end of Lord's Mobile for me. Uh, I have moved off. Uh, QLARP is now going to become the primary game, and I have another one, uh, uh it's sort of a, uh, if you will, an IRL LARP. In real life, uh, live action role play. And it, it, it basically is a nerd perspective of turning life into a game. And rather than playing things fictitiously uh, on the computer in terms of inside of a computer, or in terms of uh, role-playing simply within a simulation, you try to bring the role-play into real life, and instead of making, let's say, fake money, you make real money, <laughs> you know, for that particular character. So uh, it, this is... Something new, it's a, it's a brand new challenge. Uh, but then that's what nerd gaming is about. Nerd gaming is about the challenge. You're starting at the bottom of something new that uh, you've never really done before. You're not really too sure what the rules are, where you can go, what, what the options are. Uh, and that's kind of what makes it exciting. And I guess this is good for uh, back to school because uh, it's going to be a brand new learning experience to see uh, how much further out I can sort of extend my virtual presence, uh, or should say our virtual presence as uh, Cyborg Alpha, and so this is going to be uh, a bit of a challenge, though. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I mean, people are, uh, we, you know, just finished watching uh, Lion LeBron, and I think a while ago, the, oh, doing the uh, source work for QLARP, Things occur in an interesting fashion that you don't necessarily expect. And this whole confusion over what's going on with Biden is, 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 is an example of that the so-called uh, elite or the few, the shadow government, is not all on the same page. They are prone to confusion. And they don't know what to do sometimes. They, they get very, very much stuck. And this is what provides hope that uh, we're not won't be taken over by the shadow government. That, that things won't go so, be so bad that there is some um, saving grace that can be had. Because well, okay, well these people are confused. They're not getting what they wanted exactly. So 
let's see what the next options are. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, uh, I I did break down. I've got a, I've got a fan on now in here. Uh, the air was just getting too stale, so the fan helps and moves the air around. Uh, so on now with the Yaya vlogs and the rest of my YouTube stroll. Well, it is uh, just about uh, Damn, see here. 34 minutes into the 24th day of August 2021. And we're sitting outside. We're in our outside office right now. Uh, this is the uh, place to be right now. This is my next research desk. Everything is portable. I've got my phones and devices in here. This is where I keep everything. Uh, and I use uh, one of these uh, gr uh, grocery bags. This is uh, one of the places where I shop. So, oh, we'll continue off where we left off on the scooter because I think the scooter vlog is going to be incomplete once again. Uh, the scooter vlog is where I do a, 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 the ride vlog, the road vlog is where I do a large chunk of the call verbal essays, and we're talking about. Uh, the understanding of how Gnosis plays into the world. And people don't necessarily understand this, and they make mistakes, even high-level people make mistakes, by discounting uh, how the Gnostics play into the whole situation. The elite, the shadow government, the deep state, are all Gnostics. And particularly, they're Gnostics on the left. Where, in other words, they all have a belief in a god, uh, they're they're typically pagan, and they in these religions they typically have sacrifices, human sacrifices. And this is what the people down below are. They are the sheeple. They are the cattle. It is not simply about about hurting these people in one direction or another. It's about the sacrifice. It's these people who are going to be sacrificed. There are certain cattle and certain sheep who are not sacrificed because they are breeders. They uh, provide food or something along the line. They have some degree of value, so they're not sacrificed. But there are others who have no particular purpose, and they are indeed sacrificed. And this is what the Holocaust was. The Holocaust was a sacrifice. And it was an agreed-upon arrangement where the certain people would be sacrificed, and this, in, in case, were the Jews. Because Hitler had had a unusual background you have to go into Gnosis and understand the Gnostic background of Hitler and the SS in order to understand what the connection was. It's only there they begin to realize, okay, there's something more here. So, but the thing is, how does Hitler, someone like Hitler, get the entire uh, nation of Germany to participate in something so horrible? Well, he convinced everybody that this has been done for a while because this was the science of the day that the people, these Jewish people were defective, uh, that they weren't properly human, there was something wrong with them, and that the easiest thing to do, the best thing to do for them was to put them out of the misery. This was euthanasia. And they convinced the nurses and doctors this became the official doctrine, just like we're seeing now. That it was pushed through under Nazi doc doc doctrine, through the nurses and hospitals, first, into the scientific community, and nobody opposed it. Everyone thought, okay, this is good, this is great. And so what happens when the, when, when you heard uh, in, their, in their media, this is typically radio and uh, newspapers, and they had they did have, like, like if you look at 21st Century Fox, Fox News, it began as movie reels. It didn't begin in television. It began in movies. And they had these reporters who would trace, trace around all over the world uh, following these different uh, sort of adventures and into these different wars, and this is what you would see these, you, you, uh, particularly with Korea, you'd see them in your movie theater, you would go see the reels, uh, the Fox reels, and what was going on in Korea. And the thing is, is that it was through these that people began to believe that there was genetic defects within people, and so this is why you had the term moron. Moron was a, a, a term to describe someone who was mentally deficient. Uh, we call them disabled today. We call them uh, uh, um, 
we don't focus on the disability so much anymore. We change the but we call them differently abled. Right. Um. So you have sort of a, a, a light tracing of this, but bef- but before the political correctness of the day, there wasn't the light tracing. They used the term retarded. Uh, retarded was from the French meaning slow. Retardé is is the French word, so they use retarded. Uh, and these were people who had what they considered to be genetic defects. These were the defective people. And they said the easiest thing to do because they're not they're not going to have a good life. They say, oh, the, these people can't survive. They need to be taken care of all the time. So let's take care of them. In terms of a permanent solution, this is what they call a final solution. So they started euthanizing them. At first they started sterilizing them. And then in the hospitals, things would happen and babies would, oh, your son, he didn't make it. There was an, there was an issue. He got sick and he died. This is what was happening. This is, this is what leads into uh, the final chapter in which Hitler comes up. And this is where you have the scenes at Auschwitz and Dachau and a number of these other different uh, 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 death camps. Is that was a, that was the ending point? But they had crept into this and it become perfectly acceptable to, to the the good people of Germany to turn these people in because they were sick and they'd be taken to a place where they'd be taken care of. And they understood that this meant euthanasia. That they, oh yeah, these people are going to be euthanized. They're going to be put out of put out of their misery. And we've heard that we've heard this sort of this argument before. We've heard this in terms of the assisted what's called the assisted suicide. All oh, these people are sick; they're terminally ill; they're in pain. You would put a dog out. Of, you know, we know if a dog is sick and, and, and can't survive; it's in a lot of pain. We put the dog to sleep, and this is what it was. They were putting the people to sleep, and this is what was occurring in the death camps. And so, what happens? You had a whole system done by the good people of Germany. Who turned in people who were they thought were sick, and it turned out to be most of these Jews and stuff like that. And so, uh, this is how you get this whole thing that oh they were after the Jews, but you to look at the mechanism, and it wasn't that oh we're anti-Jewish, we're going to get rid of the Jews on our block. It's that these people are sick; they're not they they are defective, and in order to put them out of their misery, we will take them to this particular camp and or send them to this particular camp because they're not going. It's Somebody else is going to, but they, they did that. They rounded up as, as many Jews as they could find, and these were the sacrificial lambs. These are the ones, these because there were high, there were high level people who, who were Jews who just didn't, who didn't weren't sent to these camps. Uh, a little bit, a bit of background research, and you'll find the people who were sent were all agreed upon, and they were the sacrifice that they were the sacrificial. Uh, uh, offering. They were the ones to be sacrificed. Where others who had other purposes were rec- rescued, uh, given other positions, taken out of the country. Uh, in other words, they had safe passage. It just ended up being a certain group of people who didn't have enough um, value to the overall system. And I said, this system is not isolated to, to the Jews. It's there with the Catholics. Um, it's there with the Protestants. It's there for a number of different religions that have this sort of Gnostic understanding of things, that they'll go in and they'll take somebody and say, oh, you have a particular value here. You're, you're okay. Don't have to worry about anything. But you, the ones who are not of a particular value, you're below this particular line, you're, you're the ones who are going to be sacrificed. You don't have a particular value. You're down at the lower level. You're part of the herd. Uh, you're not separated or isolated from the herd. You're not important to, you're not important to the herd. So therefore, you're, you're, you, no one's going to miss you if you're gone, if you're sacrificed. So you become this sort of sacrificial point. You become the sacrificial lamb or the sacrificial bull or whatever it is. And this is this is what occurred um, in Auschwitz and Dachau. This is what occurred during Nazi Germany. It was this Gnostic uh, sacrifice of human beings. But it played out as the sort of defective thing that didn't come out as the Gnostic understanding because the Gnosis is designed to be hidden. This is the hid, hidden information. You're not supposed to see it. Kabbalah is like that. Kabbalah is supposed to be the hidden knowledge. And only certain people who have demonstrated their capacity to be illuminated are, at the, are, are invited into particular 
specialized chapters and in, in given particular honors because they ha are of a capacity, an illuminated capacity to see beyond the, the human nature. Those who are locked inside the human nature who can't see beyond this, they're, unless they have other particular values, they're part of the cattle. They're part of the, uh, it doesn't, again, it, the wealth doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, it's not an issue of money. It's an issue of capacity in terms of your Gnostic capacity, your, your knowledge of the beyond, your ability to see things that others can't. Uh, and these are the gurus, these are the Illuminati, these are the, you know, the ones who can see beyond. But in terms of, uh, of the average person, it goes back down to this whole thing of the Hegelian dialectic, where you have the anti-vaxxers and the vaxxers. The vaxxers are turning in the anti-vaxxers and, and becoming a force to force them into a particular situation that is not necessarily good. As a matter of fact, we're, we're seeing a number of euthanasia cases coming back. And again, the UN has decided that it wanted to get rid, rid of a number of people, that it's the earth is overpopulated, and it's time to start calling the human population. And you can read the stuff up. At, that it's it, this is the notes that come out of Davos and uh, the uh, some of the international pa uh, panel on climate change. They'll have their conferences. These people will show up there as well, and you can find this out. You can read their own words. You can see their own videos. And as I've been going through these th things uh, last couple of weeks, and it's just mind-boggling. They're out there talking about calling the uh, human population. Here we are seeing that COVID is nothing more than this sort of LARP scenario where <laughs> they're playing a game, and there's nothing real. I mean, the, the actual statistics in terms of the morbidity uh, for for COVID, and COVID is real. It's a real virus. It's not a fake virus. But the morbidity, the actual morbidity without the vaccine is 1%. And it's never moved. It's, it, it hasn't really moved up or down and it's seasonal. It only occurs when there's a certain season, and particularly when there's wet weather. That's where you start seeing COVID. Uh, but it's not really a serious thing. Uh, the flu is more serious because it has a morbidity of 10% and still does. So a large chunk of the people that they said died from COVID were probably uh, not even COVID deaths, but they were flu deaths. They were, uh, it, it's, it's the final point isn't even COVID itself, it's pneumonia. Uh, they find the COVID within the pneumonia because viruses can infect uh, bacteria and other types of cells like no, like, uh, like pneumonia. And so you can sort of see that the pneumonia would have been infected with uh, uh, the COVID. So you know that this is COVID pneumonia. So the death is pneumonia. The comorbidity is uh, COVID. Otherwise, it would be flu. And that's the typical uh, and then you also have tuberculosis ends in this way, uh, a number of things, and, and, and pneumonia. So, but there is a vaccine for pneumonia. So if you vaccinate, let's say, the elderly people against pneumonia, they're not going to die from any of this stuff because the, the, you're attacking them. You're, 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 you're treating the final point that's where they're going to die. So basically your treatment for the elderly is you treat for bronchitis, you treat for pneumonia, uh, on a yearly basis, and now they're protected from both flu, uh, COVID, and common cold. They're protected because they're protected from the, the, the bronchitis and pneumonia. Uh, and so that the death part and the, the morbidity part doesn't become a factor. And yet we're seeing all these deaths, and this, this is known in virology. This is known in immunology how to treat these particular diseases. And, but we're seeing those. We're seeing a large chunk of these elderly populations. This is what happened in New York, who are deliberately being killed. This is euthanasia. And the vaxxers are supporting this. The vaxxers, who are supposedly these kind human beings, oh, if you're not vaccinated, you don't care about other people. Well, I'm sort of to say, but the vaxxers, the ones who you, you are supporting the vaccine, guess what? You're part of the euthanasia program. This is, a, this is the new euthanasia. You're part of Hitler's program to get rid of people. The same thing. Same parallels are drawn between then in 1945 and now. They were carting off good people of Germany, carted off uh, uh, all these Jews because these people were sick, they were defective, and you were putting them out of their misery. Same thing now. Anyways, uh, I think I'm just going to leave it here because uh, I will do, do another segment uh when I get inside uh, for and start doing the YouTube stroll.
but we did get another area, another type of login. We got another area to log in, and uh, nobody's around at this time. It was, it's almost one o'clock in the morning. Anyways, uh, time for the YouTube stroll, and I will see you probably in two, three hours.